Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Not Your Asian Women podcast. I'm Christine Chang. I'm Shining. Today, we're going to talk about being Asian. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I don't know. We'll talk about it. So I grew up in the States. I was born and raised in the Bay Area, San Carlos, California, to be exact. Where'd you grow up? China. Chi- where in China? Ooh, hey. <laughs> And that is not a joke. She not is joke. from Wuhan, China. <laughs> yep. I don't ever have to tell them where it's at. <laughs> I remember uh, I immigrated here when I was uh, 17, 18. So um, I still got that 100% Chinese in me. I know a lot of uh, uh, American-born Asian or uh, they immigrated here very young. Um, I don't. I, I don't really... That's a joke, but I don't really consider them any real Asians. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're basically, if they came over like they at three Asian. years old, yeah. you're basically exactly. American. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I, I think I'm more of a fob, even though it's not like a freshly off the boat anymore. But I do uh, feel like I'm, I, I'm more of a fob than Asian American because I don't share that same... Um, you think so? I don't consider you fobby. No, really? No, okay. No. Well, you should see me eat chicken feet. I- <laughs> Squatting on the floor. Squatting on the floor, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and I just spit on the street. <laughs> <laughs> that Asian, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have some... Well, but what, little things I, I do notice with my friends who... Um, like, there's little cultural things... A lot of my friends who weren't born here, I noticed they'll be on their phone. It's not rude for them to be on the phone in front of other people. Mm. Where I think Americans, I, I find it rude. But like my best friend April, mm. born and raised in Taiwan, came over. But she's just like, I don't find that rude. And I'm like, I, I think it's a cultural thing. I'm like, mm. I do. I do. Can you put it away, please? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um. Definitely. I think... Uh personal space in a thing in China. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I it, it how is that for you? Are you used to it? Um unless the motherfucker has a stinky breath. Uh <laughs> it's it's okay. I mean like uh, there's so many people. Oh my gosh. Just I'm used to everywhere I go there's just so many people. Um but if uh you know like especially elder Chinese men they just they smell real fucking bad. I don't know what it is. Like they just turn a certain age and then they just rotten inside. Well, well no, it's when you get older and they the teeth. The, yeah, the breath. It is like rotten flesh. Yeah, yeah. And then like they just fucking breathe on your neck and shit. And and then you see there's <laughs> oh yeah, and there are no lines. <laughs> People don't. Oh, really laugh. Oh. they just like woo. Oh, yes, that was loud. Yeah. Well, that's also and you know in Europe, I think Americans actually are one of the countries that tend people follow the rules more or less with lining up. Um, if you go to Europe, like to board flights, people, they don't look at their group. They just all go China. The oh. personal space thing's hard for yeah. me because I'm very yeah. protective of my space. And it's even if there is physical room, you do walk together. That is the mm. culture. You do things as a group mm. where in the U.S. it is – very independent babies are put in a separate room or separate crib it's just the culture is different in that way and I think I'm very American in that way but I've traveled enough where I know like it's just different like we went to Disney Shanghai Disneyland and I'm in line and like the 13 year old boys behind are like dry humping me you know like (laughs) there's no room they they don't leave a room (laughs) no gap (laughs) I'm just like this is how it is over here Mm -hmm. And then also in um, hospitals, there's no, like, uh, there are many times I went to see, like, a gynecologist, and then she'd be asking me questions real fucking loud. And then there are, like, uh, a whole bunch of men, uh, not, like, sneaking, but just... In there's just a, yeah, there's just a lot of people in that office. That There's no, like, oh, you have your separation. own room. Separation. Right. You have own room, and then... Uh, uh, you know, you 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 do your physical check. Mm-hmm. There's only like a carton, yeah. and I'm like, what the fuck? You're saying that I gotta <laughs> show you my coochie with 
just a curtain and a whole bunch of men. Like, I can hear them out there and they can just like come in anytime. No, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> I hated that. Yeah, it's different. You, you just realize, um, yeah, how different it is. It, and the safety you get from like hospitals in the US, it's very professional, mm -hmm. right? And there is very structural and there's a lot of safety in that. It's not until I experienced going to a hospital in a different country that I was like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. Different. Yeah. Though, yeah. The, the doctor will yell out questions and there's no just no privacy at all. It's, <laughs> What's your discharge? What's the color? How does it smell like? When was the last time you had uh, intercourse? Yes. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yes. How you feel does not matter. Yeah. It's just practicality. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing the operation on you in a, a room with other people or no room. You know, it's just their space. We're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. what's, all, what's all this fluff with like a separate door and like. <laughs> like waste money. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can get there's like a billion more people there versus here. Um, personal space isn't something a priority, I guess. You can't even have that. You have you, you'd have like a high rise apartment and then you learn 10, 10 family members all live in that like a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you just get used to it, I guess. It's a different culture. It is. It's um, It's funny being like my parents are immigrants. And I said something to my mom once of like, hey, mom, like, can I use this or something? And she looked at me like so offended. She's like, what the fuck? She's like, you never have to ask me like this is your home. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm just trying to have like obviously because I grew up in the States, you know, like manners. But she yeah, she thought it was so weird. She's like, what? you asking me that of course like what's mine is yours mm, but the downside to it is though like busting your bed your door yes and, and no wanna, person no person yeah <laughs> yeah so there's just like yeah i guess double-edged sword for a lot of uh chinese families and <laughs> the, the the mother would want to cling I, I don't know clean? how clean yeah 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 okay. uh, whenever my mom visits here she'll she'll just you know yeah, oh, she'll I just yeah, yeah, she'll yeah. just like not break it, <laughs> but uh, just open our bedroom door and then start cleaning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> open that's... the curtains and hey, like you know, wake up or some. <laughs> yes, that's, it. It is funny. That's how they show their love. You know, is, is cleaning, cleaning, cooking, cleaning, cooking, and then they'll, they'll they want to tell you how to live your life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's their love language. <laughs> yes. They want to mold you into like what they want, which is usually their like mm -hmm. their dream, right? Yeah. Whatever it was. My mom was so disappointed that we, my sister and I, we didn't want to learn tennis. Mm -hmm. She was a tennis champ of Cambodia, like super athletic. It ran in the family and it just... I'm like, mom, this doesn't interest me. She, I'm like, what am I? You're a little fucking doll. You know, <laughs> it was never like, what do you want to do? It's like, this is expected of you. You're going to take over the family business. And mm -hmm. there was no individuality. There was no room for like, how do you feel? What do you think? And with my personality as a, who I am and as a kid, it did not sit well with me. And I had a coach once um, and he's just like, wow. He's like, you, you look Asian or Chinese, but there's not an ounce of you like that mm. acts Chinese, like your values, it doesn't match up. I'm like, I value freedom. Mm -hmm. I do a lot. And that, that it's can be seen as selfish, mm -hmm. right? Like doing you, you making yourself a priority. For me, I, if I take care of myself first, I have more to give to others. Mm. It's considered selfish. You know, it's they, some of them, they sacrifice oh, yeah, yeah. for That's others. Very, right? very, um, yeah, it's like uh, for Asian women mm -hmm. who, yeah, like uh, grew up in Asia or something. That's how, that's how you should act, sacrifice, and make like uh, when you're little, you should make your your father, your mother happy, do what they want you to do, mm -hmm. and then you get married and then serve your husband, mm -hmm. uh, and then your kids. There's nothing. But sacrifice. Right. Yeah. That's love. Yeah, that's them. that's the love to them. I see my uh, grandmother, my mom do that. And at a very young age, I knew the fuck to this. <laughs> I would never marry someone like my my dad. He's a great father. 
but he's a terrible husband. And then, and then my mother, she, she finds, now I, I, I understand. It's just how she was brought up. And that's what mm -hmm. she really believes. Mm -hmm. She finds joy from taking care of my father and mm -hmm. uh, her in-laws and then just family and cooks for them, clean for them. And, you know, I, that's how she finds joy. I, I don't see that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> and the good thing, good thing uh, about my mother was she never taught me how to cook clean. Yeah, she, <laughs> now I'm saying, I don't cook, I don't cook. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she, she, she wasn't forced. She was very uh, open about, like, how I want to, what I want to do in a relationship. She was never that kind of mother. Oh, because that's how I did. That's what my mother taught me. I'm going to teach you how to be a sacrifice woman take yeah. care of family she not, she was never like that i had to when i immigrated here myself i had to learn how to cook how to clean <laughs> how to take care of myself and uh yeah so i just um see their marriage dynamic and i went to the opposite of it you know how some girls uh they grew up in seeing abusive father and then they end up marry the same type of dude yeah I, I was yeah I was the opposite of it okay I see how yeah. I see how my uh, my um my father treats my mother and I go no, fuck yeah. this shit I will never marry some guy like that yeah and I, I did I it make you not want to date Chinese men oh yeah oh, well. okay oh yeah but at, uh, what about like Chinese American men have you ever dated yeah, I dated uh, Chinese Americans, um, but that it it uh, that. But the thing with with uh, Chinese people is you don't ever marry that person alone. You marry the whole fucking family. Yeah, there's no room. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I know a lot of people have a lot of say about Asian women date outside uh, Asian race or some shit. I don't give a fuck because. To me, it's hard enough to deal with my parents. I don't want another set of Asian parents. That's I, true. I, I, I need I need I, a culture where like yeah. parents are on their fucking own. They're they're doing their own shit, and they're not expecting kids to always be around, take care of them. Yeah. And that's I guess white culture. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah, the Chinese um, traditional. Chinese parents, it's, it's very intense. Yeah. And I, I know I would not do what I couldn't. I don't. If, know. yeah, if I'm here, someone who had very traditional parents like that. Oh, they would hate me. It yeah. just wouldn't work. Um, yeah, I, I love Pete's parents are the first I met that uh, respect their kids, respect me, ask questions. What do you want to do? Not, they don't expect anything. It's just like you could just be normal. Mm -hmm. but. Like normal and healthy. You don't have to put on a show. You don't have to achieve anything. It's not like gossipy. It's just <laughs> a healthy relationship. Yeah. They're not on your yeah, they're not on your ass about why why aren't you giving me a grandchildren yet? Yeah. Yeah. That my 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 in laws don't ever No pressure. Not, no pressure at right? all. They don't talk You do you. Yeah, you do you. And then they don't even expect you to pick them up from the airport whenever they visit. They can Call her Uber and do all the stuff. Yeah, on their own. they don't just take so, stuff personal. No, they're just very uh, independent beings. Yeah, I do like that. What, what do you think, though, about um, like, do you think sometimes it's too American culture could be too independent? I, I mean, I'm thinking right now of like the way you raise kids, right? Mm -hmm. And there's extremes of both sides, too. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I just, I photographed. Uh, Doljabi recently. It's a when the Korean babies turn one, mm. and I was watching the baby get dressed by his grandma and all the aunties, and like just like he's a little doll, you know, I'm like oh so cute, and he's just like literally like the picture I got was like he's like a little doll, right? Mm -hmm. And I do think that it's good to grow up in a group to know that not everything's about you. I, I do think that that 
can make a people or kids more well adjusted. But of course, there's a balance when it's too extreme to the point where you're sacrificing your happiness, you know, for the group. You don't have your own you know, thoughts or opinions. But sometimes with American kids, I mean, my observation living in L.A., some, like some of the kids are have no discipline. Everything's about them. They grow up mm. to be like narcissistic. And I'm like, dude, you if you go to any other country, actually, I feel like it's a little more um, community oriented -oriented. and that helps Mm -hmm. the kids become more well adjusted where here everything's just very separated Mm. yeah there there are it's double-edged sword right so for uh, Chinese culture is very common for parents to pay for kids education I don't know Maybe I'm just lucky or the, the environment I grew up in. I All of my friends, everybody I know, never really worked. Um, and then they, they just go to school and parents pay for, pay for that. There's no like a summer job or something. You have to earn your own money so you can buy stuff you like. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe just... Uh, the environment I grew up in is, but to me, that was my common uh, knowledge. And when I first immigrated here, and uh, it was it was a little sh- uh, shocking to me because many uh, kids that went to school, I went to college with, they had to pay for their own tuition. They had to pay for even with uh, living with parents. They had to pay, pay some rent. sort of rent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, pay pay car payment or something. They have to pay for their own stuff. They had to work. Yeah. And, and I was like, God damn, like, why do you work? Mm-hmm. You, it, I didn't understand that culture. When they asked me, oh, like, uh, what do you do for work? I was like, oh, why do you need to work? Mm-hmm. You just need to go to school. So that, that was one thing I noticed. Um, the cultural difference, I guess. Yeah. How Americans' parents... Don't, I guess it's a double-edged sword because of the sacrificing factor in our culture. Parents work their ass off to provide, to pay, to, to yeah. get out of, you know, slum or, or bad neighborhood and then pay for their kids' education. And then the downside of it is who has money, who, who you know, who pays for shit, who is the daddy. Yeah. So you have to follow their rules. There are certain things you can't do in their household. And then... Um, you can't, you know, as a, a as a you know younger kids, I guess I've heard Asian Americans complain about it. Um, you can't really, you know, do stuff, and then it's you know traumatic, and then they're they, even though they're adults now, uh, their parents still have to tell them what to do. But the thing is, like, they pay for they pay they pay for your stuff. You're living in their household. You're not paying for rent like uh, other cultures do. Right. Yeah, there. the The downside of it is you have to uh, apply yeah. for their rules. Yep. Yeah, that's what. Do you follow Gary Vaynerchuk? Gary V. Yeah, Gary at all? V. Yeah. But a lot of the younger kids who they um, complain about their parents and they're, you know, he's like, "Are they paying for everything?" Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's like, "Well, if you make your own money, then you know, you're you can have a little more freedom, freedom. and choice." Then, mm-hmm. yeah, that's. So that's, yeah, the, I guess, yeah, you can have your cake and eat it too and expect your parents to pay for everything, live in their house rent free and then do all kinds of drugs and shit that you, you <laughs> want to do. Yeah, that, that's not fair. Um, but yeah, I guess. And then with American culture, um, independent is, is good. Um, but the thing I've heard is, um, uh, in, in interracial uh, marriage, especially, uh, we, we're we're like it's it's given. the The parents will take care of the grandchildren. Mm, mm-hmm. It's it's given. It's like uh, duh. But like for Americans, uh, it's not. It's like why the fuck do I need? Like they're older, they're retired. Why do I need to take care of your kids? It's not my responsibility. They rather go on cruise vacations, <laughs> yeah. right? And one of my girlfriends who's in that situation that get you know gets doesn't understand is that they they live so close, but 
mother-in-law never really, yeah. like she would say nice things. That's what like we joke about is that Asian parents give you childhood trauma, but white parents are nice, but useless. <laughs> they don't pay for your fucking school. They don't pay for your vacation. They don't take care of your kids. They don't pay for your down payment for houses, <laughs> but they're nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, different. My observation with that growing up here well, I think <laughs> I think it's nice that like my parents being immigrants, there's aspects of them that are very Asian and some that are American, you know. So it's nice that they could pull from both cultures. But like my mom, she doesn't watch her grandkids much. She like doesn't want to. She doesn't want the stress. I have an auntie, same thing. She purposely moved far from she has five kids purposely moved far she's like I don't want to watch your kids <laughs> and I'm like you do you she's literally going on cruises around the world and um yeah I I respect that you know I'm like I don't think the it should be obligated I'm like you chose to have the kid you know like what is what does someone else like have to watch it for you exactly exactly right? so that yeah that I guess that's the the a little culture difference I notice okay what about um well, you, I want to hear about your experience dating um, Asian men. Um, few I dated. It's just one thing I cannot stand. It's just not like it, it doesn't matter what type of race. Is I, I I can't do a lot a lot of big family gatherings. I know, like I. I came from a culture where it's supposed to be like family oriented and all that. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Maybe it's the, the trauma I had when I was growing up. And I just remember these fucking ants sitting together, com comparing kids, yes, like their I fucking hate, favorite sports. I hate that. I hate too. the gossiping, yeah, the gossiping and the fucking, yeah. And then just yeah. complaining about their husbands not doing shit. But, um, hey, you know, you have a chance to get a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> like, every fucking year, every Chinese New Year, nothing else but, like, just talking shit and not doing nothing about it. Mm. I hate that. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, I think the traditional culture, the communication yeah. is just not healthy. Yeah. The emotional, like, um, mental health is not a thing. Yeah over there yeah <laughs> right it's no. just your feelings don't don't matter or they're not a priority mm -hmm. over there and I always I never understood the and and this is why like traditional Asian parents can be so hard on their kids is because they grew up in a culture and generation that does talk shit you know like mm -hmm. they're gonna think bad of you I'm like I don't give a shit if they think bad of me it's my life you know and it, it's to them it's like well you're representing our family here and uh, even my mom, she admits now, she's like, I know I care too much what people think. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all she knew growing up. And it's something she's working on. But she, she at least admits it. I've had to do so much work to unravel that. Because mm -hmm. I believed it for a long time. She put so much pressure on it. It's like, what are they going to think? Now to the point where I'm like rebellious. Like, I don't give a shit. You know, like, you don't, they don't like it. Like, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like a... Uh any culture that, that values like family as first priority or like you have to show up to family gatherings or something like that, I don't like it. The obligation. The actually, obligation. My, my sister and I both agree. We don't believe in doing things out of obligation. Like, don't you want people to want to be there? Mm -hmm. You know, Like, I hate when I see like family gatherings and I could just tell like, the little kids are miserable because that was me I see Same. myself I'm like dude these kids are not vibrant they're not you know encouraged to be like have a fulfilled life I was, it, and it, all I see is a sad kid and it makes me really sad mm -hmm. um that they're not considered I just think people should be considered like right just not so extreme I, I felt like dragged around as a kid like no, we're going here. Like, you're expected just to do what the adults are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And yes, you, I do think kids should have respect for their elders. But at the same time, it's a balance, too, of, um, yeah. yeah. Like, don't you want a happy kid? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I, I mean, dating is fine. But, like, um, 
when it comes to serious, uh, like committed relationship or like even thinking about marriage, uh, I would I would very I would I would uh, look at how he interacts with family and then what the family ex- ex- expected from us. If there's any expectations, I can't do. Mm-hmm. That's a that's us personally. Yeah. Of course, you do you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure like uh, Mexicans, they love you know like a family gatherings mm-hmm. and they're happy mm-hmm. about it. Then you know you yeah. do you, but I can't like. Uh, no, no expectations from me. I, I, if I want to, I'll show up. If not, like there are days I don't want to do nothing, mm-hmm. and I don't want to feel bad about or making you know people make me feel bad about not showing up to yes. their like dumbass fucking party. Yes, yes. And my kids recitals and shit. <laughs> no one gives a fuck. Oh, th- that is true. That's something I like to say. Okay, this might not be kind, but it's true. Unless it's your kid. With the exception of maybe a grandparent or like an auntie, like no one loves your kid the way you love your kid. Yeah. Okay. I just want, I think some people are, my thing is like delusional when people just expect like, of course, everyone thinks my kid's the best. I'm like, I know you think it's the best. Mm-hmm. You want to do all these things for them, but not everyone wants to do everything for Exactly. Them. Yeah. Um, I would love to talk more about dating because we do, Shining and I get quite a bit of pushback sometimes depending on the clip that we post. Mm. I, th- I think it's from Asian men who don't like that we married outside of our race. Actually, specifically, they don't like that we married white oh, men and I think there's a lot of assumptions made you know what do they call it? like white worshippers like <laughs> have you read have you read any of them <laughs> have you read them? you're like you'll be nothing but the white man's pet dog yes. and all this all these assumptions and uh you know I think one of them is like you don't like Asian guys I'm like who said I don't like Asian guys Mm-hmm. I never said I've dated a ton. I like them. I like them a lot. I find them attractive. It just happens the one that I married is white. Yeah. But I, anyways, you, I can't engage with those people. You can't win with them. It's a waste of time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hence, not your Asian women. We're I, just like <laughs> free willed women who will date whoever the fuck we want to date. That's what I said. I'm like, why? Oh, I hate like being controlled. I'm like, uh, I wasn't aware that we belong to anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I don't understand. I just I don't know. I don't get it. I think I just live my life like you do. You like I'm not telling you who to date. You date whoever the fuck you want. Why are mm-hmm. you trying to tell me who to yeah. date? You can date a fucking frog. I don't give a seriously. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Asian men like I um I had really enjoyable relationships with them, and um. I'm going okay. back and I'm yeah. trying to think of... We're, yeah, none of them were too traditional, I would say. Yeah, I think uh, going back to what you were saying, um, be, I, I guess because of the trauma or how I was brought up, uh, I hesitate for sure. That's honesty. Like I hesitate from dating Asian men because mm. I know how... Uh, I know this is generalization. Everybody's a little different. But uh, like I said earlier, the family expectation is true in all Asian culture. They're, they're judgy. And I, I don't like that. I hate I hate that. So um, that's that's one thing. Yeah, that's it's one already I have like a baseline <laughs> assumption of, oh, shit, like, you know, I'm, I, I, I can't date you because... If you know, if your family is involved, then I'm expected to take care of your parents or whenever I'm at your house, your parents' house, I have to act like a a, a female, <laughs> like a, a traditional <laughs> Asian fe- Asian woman, like cooks, cleans, and, you know, get, get up and then just clean the tables and all, in the kitchen. I see those women growing up. I'm like, why the fuck you... Like why, why, why couldn't you? Why could the man couldn't men do that? And then you sit in front of TV and then talk to the TV and watch sports, or fucking serial killers. You know why? <laughs> so I, I, I never, I never wanted that tradition, that role. So I guess 
But what, um, if, what if it's an Asian guy, like, adopted by white parents? Um, Would that give you less um, anxiety about anxiety it? Anxiety about it? <laughs> like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, yeah. Because then, you know, you just, you're just like a, a, a banana, <laughs> yellow on the outside, white, in, uh, white inside. <laughs> and you don't have that. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I guess a lot of uh, white parents would have that value too. It, yeah, it's not like just of course. your race. Yeah, oh, but, of course. Yeah, yeah, but um, but Asian, I guess, culture in general, the family expectation, the in-laws is way too much bullshit for me. So that that's really why I don't prefer. If Which, if I if fair. I uh, had an opportunity to meet adopted Asian men, <laughs> <laughs> or even Asian men on the rare occasions they their uh, a, their parents don't have expectations, then yeah. That's that's a that's a big deal to me. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Growing up, I didn't. I my. It's funny because my sister and I like have completely different experiences of growing up. We did the same things. She loved getting together with the extended family. I sometimes, but not all the time. For me, I just never felt like me. Like this is not something where she does. She likes it. And she sees my cousins a lot more than I do. Like, yeah, it never felt right to me or within my own personal values, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting. Yeah. What but, el oh, okay. Um, what but, else? Um, well, with Asian men, he, well, of course, we're giving generalized statements, okay? Like, Pete's parents are white, but they're... Um, our family values are actually pretty similar. I mean, his parents, Polish and Scottish, and his mom came over when she was three. So it's kind of an immigrant mentality where they do do a lot of family things together. I'd say more so than the than other American families that I've seen. Um, they live in New Jersey, by the way. But they do, I would say, have healthy communication and um, not judgmental respect um, their kids. So, yeah, so that's nice. And I think that's made it easy for Pete and I that it, it's it's close enough because my parents, I, w I wouldn't consider them traditional. There's aspects of them, the um, achievement, wanting us to learn violin and piano. Like there there are aspects of it. But I would say overall they're, they're pretty well-traveled too. So I think mm -hmm. that also gives them um, mm -hmm. more of an open mind when it comes to things. I know they would like it if Pete and I had a kid, but they don't. Um, they don't pressure. The pressure. They, yeah. they don't say anything. I just they respect it. I'm, I'm like, no, I don't think so, mom. She's like, OK. And yeah. she's, she's never brought it up again. Yeah. With Chinese parents, they don't give a fuck your pronouns, your gay, your <laughs> your sexual preference. Give them a grandkid. That's all they care about. <laughs> you can come out to them. They don't care. OK, you're gay. But when I, when kidding. am I going to have a grandbaby? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm thinking more about. Asian men. We had a experience, Pete and I, with this guy. And of course, I just like to put what what is it called when I put say like I know I understand not all men are like this. The book, but this guy was super um, aggro, like combative. Do you do you have that experience with Asian men? So basically, okay, growing up when um, we used to go clubbing and stuff. And I had a guy friend who was like security at the clubs. And there's different nights. There's like an Asian night, you know, different nights. And he's like, I swear to God, whenever it's the fights, 99% of the time it's the Asian guys. This mm -hmm. is growing up in the Bay Area, by the way. Mm -hmm. And to me, how I try to make sense of it is like their emotions are not processed, you know, and they they felt a need to like prove themselves in a certain way. Because I get it, the way like Asian boys are raised it's your emotions are extremely suppressed mm -hmm. right you don't have anywhere for your anger to go maybe you don't feel understood in certain ways and also um what's the word emasculated you know from popular cinema at least in the states you know so it was always them trying to like prove something that was how i made sense of it love like why are they always trying to fight but this guy this asian guy tried to pick a fight with pete recently and adults he was like in his 40s it was so weird to me. We were getting coffee and then he was really put together, like clean clothes. You could tell he was really educated. And um, I think the line for the coffee started to get long. And so 
Pete, um, by the way, Pete works with this restaurant group, so maybe he said it in this way. He's just like, oh, we're going to stand over here so the line doesn't like stick out into the street, you know? And I think the Asian guy didn't l like to feel like told what to do or something like that. He just snapped. He got really mad. He got in Pete's face. And, and Pete thought he was joking, you know, because I didn't hear anything at all, you know, and he was just like, like, what'd you say to that? And then he's like, I'm just trying to be woke today or something like that. He made a joke. And then the guy's like, oh, you're woke today. And he got really close to him. And then Pete's just like, I thought you were joking, you know? And he's like, yeah, you're just a white guy that would say that to an Asian guy. And I turned around and I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I, I didn't hear, I didn't hear anything like that. Yeah. I thought you were joking too. And he's like, of course you wouldn't hear it that way. And I, I was genuinely curious. So I was trying to have a conversation like, why wouldn't I? But, but he was like, just stop it. Just forget it. You know? Yeah. That guy is uh, clearly a little crazy going through some shit. It's definitely like some aggro shit. And, yeah. I, was, and I was just like, okay. And I just triggered him that you, day. But anytime someone's mad at like mean to Pete because he is like the like your husband mm -hmm. like such a kind soul I get so fucking pissed you oh know? yeah and then so I and I and then and he's just like just let it go it's really hard for me to let it go I was just like fine and we just turn around and he's like one yeah. more thing don't you just want to smack a bitch <laughs> yeah. fucking like kill him and shit god damn if somebody <laughs> talked to my husband like that fuck I'm going to jail yeah it, I was just like okay he he feels a need to say something um I didn't I didn't fully understand it but I was just trying to be I did want to understand and I know Pete maybe because I know him well Sometimes I think he can rub people the wrong way, maybe because I know him well. Maybe I didn't hear something the way he heard it. But it just reminded me of how some Asian men growing up, they're the ones who feel like they need to prove yeah, they're their like masculinity. Yeah. yeah. Like the trauma or trigger or some shit had made them feel like it's them versus the world. And uh, you need to have like they're they're always on guard fight or flight yes response and then and then especially uh nowadays is like oh let's all attack the white man <laughs> or something yeah i was like usually i'm pretty sensitive to things like that because you would only know certain things if you're a person of color right mm -hmm. and i just like i i didn't hear anything mm -hmm. and i wanted to stick up yeah i mean like yeah i used to have friends uh not anymore but i used to have friends uh like uh, you know, like straight up from China, the the real fops, um, they 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 always resort to oh that's racist, that's racist. They treat me like that because they're racist, and, and I didn't I didn't want to argue because I'm like god damn bitch, you're annoying. <laughs> Fucking, I hate you. <laughs> Like, it's not, like, racist. Like, shit, like, have you been to outlet malls and then they're full of fobs and then trying to just go in the store and then take pictures and then buy, like, a 100 items on sale and not even ask permission, can I take a picture? Hey, um, you know, I'm buying stuff uh, for my shop and stuff. And, and they just start, you know, doing shit. And then the, the store uh, wants them, you know, the, you can't take pictures like this. You're, you know, just drafting customers with some shit and then they, they have their own reason in business and they don't yeah. want you to go take pictures and stuff they they ask you out and that that's not always racist <laughs> not. i'm sure they're racist occasions they you know they kick you out and shit but i've traveled the world i've met many people most people i meet are nice and, and and even if I do run into people that say some weird shit, I don't go, oh, that's racist. I just go, oh, this person is fucking crazy, <laughs> saying some wild shit. Like, go back to China and stuff. I'm oh, like, that, that, that person is drunk or, or you know, like, um, yeah, like, we're on drugs. And I, I do encounter a few uh, uh Ignorant comments, but I don't go, oh, that you know, everybody is racist against me. You don't like me because you're racist. You can have <laughs> that mentality. <laughs> and then um, what else? Because I know um, my people, 
we can get we can we can be rude as fuck. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Like the first time uh Brad visited China and people just go to tell you know, right off the bed and tell him, Oh, you're fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I just it's not it's just a comment we make. It's just more matter of fact. Yeah. Like an observer, like you're fat. Yeah, you're fat. You're 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 <laughs> fat, you're poor, you're ugly. Don't say shit like that. There is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you say that? All oh, everybody there is racist too, or you know, fat phobia or some shit. You, it's just different. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't see it like that. Um, where was I going with it? Um, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, your call. Sorry. I mean, I definitely, <laughs> I. I prefer people who are straight up about things. It makes me trust them. Like I, I, I'm a pretty direct person, but I think there's, for me, it's the balance of having some tact. Like, yes, I want the truth, but sometimes I don't think people always want an unsolicited opinion. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, my thing is um, personally is, you know, if it's, especially if it's a more ne- leans on the negative side, I'm like, unless someone asks, like I, don't think I need to say something, but if they ask me, I'll give you the, my honest feedback. I don't always have to say like what I think, especially if it's negative. Mm, yeah. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but I, that's how I would like to be treated. Cause sometimes I, I have a friend, my best friend, who's Taiwanese. She can be very blunt, but sometimes I'm just like, I didn't ask for your opinion. Can you not like yeah. there? There was a tact to it. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember now my point. So, um, so when so I know uh, how blunt and straightforward uh, Chinese people can be. Um, I don't hold that against other race. I've uh, I you know I lived in the South. And I might be the first Asian a lot of those motherfuckers see. Mm. And they, they're, they, they're interested. They want to know questions. And they ask some ignorant shit that's funny to me. And I've had people ask me, why are your eyes so slanted? Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I don't know. It's just a comedian in me. I laugh. And I, I, don't, I don't go, oh, that person is fucking racist. I just go, oh, shit, this person is on the spectrum. <laughs> Like all the motherfuckers I know back home, just straight up tell people you're fat, you're poor. <laughs> so it's the same thing. So I don't, I don't, I just think, oh, this person is on the spectrum. They, they, they just, you know, ask wild <laughs> shit. I, 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 I have more respect to people like that. Then passive aggressiveness mm-hmm. I had experienced in the West Coast. And uh, um, I think we talked about it. I feel like you, you don't know what to do in that situation. Because um, if, if it just, you know, uh, some like a weird questions, you can laugh it off or, uh, you know, ask them uh, some weird questions and, and then make fun of each other's culture and then have a laugh. And that's fun. But um, there are comments like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Mm. I'm like, the fuck? Yeah. I'm not, what the fuck is I'm so glad, I'm so glad you're here. I'm, I'm here, motherfucker. I don't give a fuck you're glad or not. I've had so many people saying that, oh, you're from China. Oh, like I'm, like I'm glad for you. You're, you're, you're now, you're, you're here. It's almost like they put you're free. themselves like, Yeah, they put you. themselves above you. I don't like, so as, a, yeah, yeah, going back to the topic, as a... Uh, a real Chinese, <laughs> like straight up from China, uh, the way I see things are very different than uh, Asian Americans. I don't have that uh, identity issues or the struggles you mm. have struggled. Um, and, and then I don't see this white privilege I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I know plenty of poor motherfuckers. They're like so poor. Oh, because you grew. Wait, where did where did you grow up? Uh, in the states. Oh, when you oh, moved Wuhan. here. Yeah, when I moved here. Yeah, when I moved here. Like, I, I yeah, I don't I don't see this thing. Like, because um, I don't I don't have a, uh, I don't have the same experience as oh uh, everything 
here in America, TV portrays, you know, like uh, just attractive uh, white men and not enough attractive Asian men or some different culture or, you know, how these talking points yeah. that, that everybody talk about some shit like political correctness shit. Um, I, I don't have that. I don't ha I don't share the same mentality. Right. Yeah. As you wouldn't because you didn't grow up. Yeah. Here. And then when you came here, you lived in Georgia? In Georgia. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, all that shapes how someone views the world because I see it for sure. Like yeah. growing up here, I see the white privilege like for sure. Yeah. Everything's on um, a continuum, right? So I have some friends who are really like point fingers goes there right away, like white privilege with everything. I'm not really like that, but I do see that from my experience that it exists. Mm -hmm. But I also, I like having conversations with, because everyone's different. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, they're going to see the world according to their own experience. Mm -hmm. And I like talking to you because you, we can have a conversation yeah. having these different experiences. Yeah. And also not agree. Yeah, the only problem I have with these talking points is if I don't fit in with your narrative, then uh, my view does not get uh, uh, accepted or something like that, that I have to be oppressed. I have to, uh, I don't know, like my family had to fucking escape communism or some shit. Like, you know, um, I don't share that same uh, talking points where I, there's not enough representation or things like that because I don't share the same upbringing and because uh, when I was growing up everything everybody I see on on TV is Chinese motherfuckers right <laughs> that's enough right <laughs> representation for me right. <laughs> like right. right so you did never well coming over at 22 did you have to fight to fit in at all where people were pretty nice to you yeah in the south yeah yeah people in the tough. south are very nice okay very nice. I know a lot of people uh, in the Bay Area. I worked with a few people, and then when they find out, they were concerned. Like, oh, my God, how is it like in the South? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, good. Everybody's nice. I loved it. Yeah. And I can see that that's not the answer they expect you to say. Yeah. And they, they, don't know how to, they don't know how to act. Like, they, they almost expect me to feel like a victim. Or, like, want me to say some shit? Well, people, they, ha they have their own preconceived yeah. notions. I'm like, unless you're actually over there, you can't make this assumption that that's what it's like. A lot of the stuff, too, also, because I feel lucky that I've got to travel a lot. Like, the stuff you hear on the news, right? And some people just assume that you watch one little news clip. Oh, my gosh. It, like, for example, like, there was riots in Paris or in France mm -hmm. recently, right, with the protests. And you see one clip with, like, a dumpster on fire and people are just like, my mom's like, you're going to France. You need to be careful. Da, da, da. But from my experience mostly, what's in the news clip and if you actually go over there does not match. You know, that's one clip from one night. And if you went over there, just say I never watched news, I probably wouldn't even know anything's going on. That's been my experience like going to um, when there was the Syrian refugee crisis and they were all going to Greece, I went over to, over there to volunteer and it didn't look anything like how it was depicted in the news yeah. at all. And I'm like, I really can't say anything unless I'm over there and I see it with my own eyes. I'm going to question everything. Yeah. Because honestly, if, if I went over to, it was Lesbos, Greece, if I didn't watch the news or didn't know anything, I would have just been on vacation. I wouldn't know anything's going on. It's not they do have they did have the refugee camps. It's uh, and I knew about it because I was volunteering. But if I didn't know about that, I would have had zero idea. It didn't look anything like how it's depicted in the news. Yeah, news are. I think by this point we all know it's a little bullshit. I mean, it's I, just a fit I hope a narrative. People know, but I feel like a lot of people people don't. I feel like they wow. do. Well, also from. Um, you're smart, mm -hmm. though, you know. Is that? Oh. Is it running out Hello? of battery? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> oh. Um, like my mom watches the news. I know people who, um, you know, with social media, they feed you to, f what they feed you fits the things that you like <laughs> to see, right? I got a story to yeah. share. 
So if you're not careful, even with my husband, I've called him out a couple of times and I'm just like to remind him, I'm like, not everyone's like that. I'm like, there's people who genuinely like Trump and he, and sometimes he's like in such disbelief. I'm like, hello, you know, I'm like, what, whatever articles you're reading mm-hmm. kind of fits more of like it. Yeah, your narrative chamber or some yeah, right. Just remember, there's people out there that don't think like you. Mm-hmm. Exactly, <laughs> they shouldn't. I think it's beautiful that everybody I, thinks differently. I agree. That's what that's what's interesting. That's how we're supposed to be, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm like, what happened to having regular conversations with people? Of like, of course, there's going to be things you don't like, and you could say to someone like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I don't really like." that can we not talk about it not like you're fucking canceled what the hell you're you know (laughs) like it's just (laughs) yeah i think people are losing their relating skills Mm -hmm. and yeah you have to be able to have conversations this is how change is made Mm -hmm. yeah and then also what i i see like a core uh a person's core like we're uh, what you believe, your ideology, your religion, where you grew up, all this is kind of like, a, it, it shapes how you think, but uh, your thoughts are not you. You can, if you can like see the true person, it doesn't matter, right, left. Um, they're like, you can, you can see the core in a person, if it's like a good person or not, a kind, sweet person, person who makes mistakes, but own up to them that's that's the most important everything else i don't give a fuck what you believe to be honest you can relate to anyone in that in that regard if you if you, you can just you know find that core value that that matches with yours and then also yeah we're talking about the news i have an interesting story to share so you know at the peak of the pandemic and with the blm and then um, the and then also like the riots and stuff. It was crazy on January six. It was like the, you remember how America was so fucking crazy for a while. <laughs> and my homie from China, he saw the news and then he was like, "Oh, dude, are you okay?" Yeah. And then he was making fun of me like, "Yo, <laughs> bitch, now do you regret <laughs> like going to going to America? <laughs> yeah, your country is falling apart on fire, dude." <laughs> And then I got I got upset. I'm like, because uh, in China it wasn't any better the way uh, it portrays here. Mm. It's like everybody's locked up inside, mm-hmm. and, like starving to fucking death, and drink their piss and eat their shit or something. Right, you know, right. like. And then so that's if everybody believed that, they would be like, oh my god, China is is uh, is in the shithole. Like people, everybody's jumping off a building and then get locked inside. <laughs> so I said, yeah. So when he made fun of Marika, I, I made I made fun back and I said, yeah, good luck eating your shit locked up inside. <laughs> and I took a picture of all my guns and magazine and I, and I said, bitch, you wish you had these. <laughs> yeah. So like we would. Uh, luckily, I have friends I can you know like make fun of I- each other. And if we see news that concerns us about uh, yeah friends back home and then we would you know make fun of each other like that but they are people who really do believe uh in china who do believe oh america is falling apart totally uh, they, they don't want to come here they think they're gonna get shot up yeah yeah <laughs> and then like everybody you know everybody's shooting everybody <laughs> even though it's true <laughs> <laughs> But like here too, they think like the whole fucking uh, Europe is on fire. Uh, China is is about to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it. Yeah, if you don't, I mean, I don't believe the news. No, if I, you have, I, I question everything. Like yeah. that's just you know slivers of things. But I, usually, if it's someone I personally know and they're on the ground, that it to me is the most accurate. Or if I'm on the ground, then I can assess it. Otherwise, I'm just like, it's just made, they're control. like, it's just made up what part of this clip is shown to you. Yeah. What's the full story? Is there more of a story? Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe there is. I think usually there is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know any younger people who believe anything from the news anymore. The younger is older. better. Yeah. It's, it's older. The older people who still think, believe that. 
Yeah, I think most of the people I hang out with are older than me. Yeah, Pete, my mom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah more. Yeah, I think younger people, millennials and the Gen Zs, they, we, all, we all know. They, yeah, the this bullshit. is fucking bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People are just people. You know, we can relate to anyone. doesn't matter what you believe. Um, yeah, just do stuff that make you happy. That's about it. Don't don't read the news. <laughs> it's, oh yeah, it's not good for you. Um, but it's, uh, we're, we're running out of time here, but a separate conversation for another time. I do feel like some of the younger ones can be very intolerant, though, of if you don't agree with them on certain mm. things. They feel very strongly about certain things that... I feel like it comes with a certain naive, naivety as well, where I I think you learn certain things as you get older the way, that it's not so black and white. Mm. Yeah, the hypocrisy of, yeah, I've yeah. seen like activists and yeah, like a, a, like they're really into the environments and stuff. Oh, there's so much hypocrisy. It's so yeah. funny to see. <laughs> I mean, it's easier to see from when it's not you, right? The yeah. outside, I'm just like... Okay. Yeah, but like, bitch, you use everything Apple. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're fucking, the EV, you're fucking driving, guess what? Is the fucking from like child slave in Africa, a lot of these silicone mining places. Yeah. 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 I, before we end really quickly, I saw, um, what's it, Black China? Do you know who Black China oh, is? Oh, yeah, the she, rapper. Yeah, she sells um, hair extensions mm -hmm. now. And on her Instagram, I saw she um, she took her followers to Burma, where they get the hair, to show how it's made. And then people got really mad seeing that. Like, you know, it's it's human hair. And then in the comments, which I agree, they're like, "You all you bitches wear extensions. How, where do you, how do you think it's made? You exactly. think that your brand is better than this? Like, the conditions were good. It's just, it's of course, it's different, the factories mm -hmm. than yeah. here, right? But people were just so so mad about it but i'm like yeah and i don't remember do I, yeah i wish i could give credit to this comedian but i uh, came across uh his <laughs> clip and then he said something about um bitches be like crying over uh like no water in africa kids there don't have you know clean water but you take shit every day in clean water I, I'm, I'm messing with his bit, but uh, uh, the way he said it was really funny. Like, you don't think about it like that. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's easy to sit here comfortable in a first world country in America to pointing fingers and then tell, saying, uh, you know, other people are doing this wrong, other culture are doing this wrong or something like that. Or like being righteous. I, I really don't like that. Yeah, and then also, oh, are we? Uh, yeah, we should probably end and then yeah, let's and then talk about save it for else. the next episode. Yeah.